I think this might be a perfect game. I'm still debating on it, but I might actually think Hollow Knight is a perfect game. What's up everyone, I'm Fritzy, and welcome to Life's a Video Game. So as of this date, Hollow Knight has been out for over a year and a half, and this game has been on my radar, but there was just so many other great games coming out at the time that I decided to pass on this one, for a while. Then Nintendo announces that Hollow Knight is available for the Switch, and I'm like, dope, this game would be perfect for handheld, but I can't really justify the purchase, so I'll wait. But then one day my brother comes over with his Switch, and he's like, dude, you gotta check this game out. So I play the first 10 minutes of Hollow Knight, and I'm like, damn, this game is amazing. Let's just play for the rest of the day. But then he's like, well, no, you're playing on my Switch, and I'm going to take my Switch back home with me. So it's kind of a waste of time to keep playing, as I am a mean old jerk who doesn't want you to have nice things. I was angry, but I chose to forgive my brother for his transgression because I am the taller brother. And though I couldn't justify my purchase, I bought it anyway. And speaking of purchasing the game, holy crap, is this a good deal or what? So I live up in Canada with these guys. So the cost was around 18-ish dollars. And I've been told that the US only has to pay $15. So my copy must be the more prestigious. It's the price. I mean, like, so what? It's a 2D side-scrolling game, it's indie developed, and you think, yeah, 18 bucks sounds like a normal price to me. And then you play the game, and you're like, oh, dang, this could possibly be the best game I've ever played, and it took me like 40 hours to get through. That's kind of like a big deal. Most AAA games I play are around 10 to 20 hours long, and they're mostly well made, and the cost is about 80 or 60 if you're not from the north. I remember listening to Joseph Anderson, another fancy YouTuber, talk about this game and he said that he'd gladly pay for Hollow Knight at full price, and that this game is permanently on sale. And yeah, I would tend to agree with him too. So then... What is so special about Hollow Knight? Well, probably the first thing you'll notice is the aesthetic. The game has this haunting sort of vibe, like I'm playing a game that Edgar Allan Poe created or something. The starting has no music, just you and the environment, and excellent sound effects. All you really hear is the wind blowing and creatures squawking at you. I don't know what it is, but when there is no music, yet the sound design is top notch, I feel as if the developers are asking you to lean in and pay attention, like as if the world is more important than anything else out there. I mean, for me, it's a fantastic way to pull me into the game world, that's for sure. So you don't have a whole lot of moves at the beginning, but that's kind of perfect because even someone like me who thinks he's good at video games does not want to be overwhelmed by overly complex controls. You're able to move left, right, up, down, and you can jump. The jump is fairly simple and the platforming segments are just enough of a challenge to get you used to how your character controls. You also have this sword-like slash with what is called a nail. You can slash your nail up, down, left, right, again, keeping it simple. So you push on a little bit and the game organically teaches you the basics without explaining anything. I'd say at this point, even if you're not a gamer but wanted to try them out, this game has the perfect tutorial for you to learn all the basics in a nice simple fashion. You'll soon walk past this thing and it'll explain a way of healing yourself. As you hit a foe, the circle thing will fill up with what is called a soul. You will then hit a button and then boom, you got some health back. So what have we learned so far? After you've learned the basics of moving, jumping, and slashing, you'll learn that you should be active in fighting enemies, so you'll have enough soul power to heal. You'll learn that you shouldn't be passive in this game. And hey, check it out! There has been no hand-holding with some other random character teaching you this. Just one description on how to heal and you're ready to go on your way. Soon after, you'll come across another one of these things, and you can choose to read the message if you like. It says, Beyond this point, you enter the land of king and creator. Step across this threshold and obey our laws. You'll probably have no idea what it's talking about, but... Now you can get a bit of a sense of what you're about to walk into. And the cool part is, if you don't care about the story and you only like gameplay, well then neat. You don't actually have to read any of it at all. It's kind of perfect for any type of gamer, or even non-gamers for that matter. So you head down here and you enter the town of Dirtmouth. Get it? Because you're standing on dirt and you're about to head into the mouth of something mysterious. That sounds incredibly dirty. Obviously, because we are in dirt mouth, you fool. <sighs> and then the music hits. Gee, this music is depressing. Even if you don't care about story, you're gonna get a sense that Hollow Knight isn't too much of a joy-filled game. It's all somber, making me feel like something went horribly wrong here. But what? We can talk to this dude, the Elder Bug, and he gives you a reasonably detailed description of what you're about to journey into. It's fantastic as this guy sets the scene for you, but you don't need to talk to him. You can do whatever you want, and that's nice. You can also sit on the bench to rest, as we all love to sit on a bench and rest. It's a um, very important part of our culture. 
Hey, look, all your health is back, and now you are fully refreshed. You sensing a theme here? You keep on learning what you can do as a character and the setup for the story and tone, all in this fairly organic way. Nice and simple. Hmm. So you jump down here and Oh, fascinating. How do you know where to go? Because both left and right are a full-on option to you right now. And guess what the answer is? Uh, whatever you want. This ain't no book learning school where you stand in single file, please. Nah. This is for you as a single individual human <clears throat> bug. Get to learn to be an individual and figure out what you have to do. I have no clue what I'm talking about. But just be an independent human being. Or bug. Just be yourself. Duh. Idiot. You see, you'll learn very quickly that this game allows you to go anywhere, and the whole world is completely interconnected. You know, it's like you living in your own town and city, and there are multiple ways for you to get from one place to another. And you're not gonna let anybody tell you which way is the correct way, because there isn't. There might be a faster way, but maybe that way is more dangerous, so instead you choose the safe way. It might take you a bit longer, but you're new to this place, so take your time. Don't worry, if you feel a little bit more confident, then you can take the more dangerous yet faster route. Again. You can do whatever you want. There's actually a name for this type of game, and it's called Metroidvania. That's a made-up word. Sure, but us gamers invented the name like 25 years ago, so like, catch up. The name is based off two games, one called Metroid, a Nintendo game where you're a space lady shooting space bugs in a maze where you go and do whatever you want, and another game called Castlevania Symphony of the Night, where you're a vampire killing person, or you are the vampire, but you're in a castle fighting other scary monsters, and you get to go and do whatever you want. You know, freedom. So anyway, these two games popularized the maze like, I can go where wherever I want, you know, left, right, and the world is all interconnected style. And since that description is far too long of a title for a gaming style, we call this the Metroidvania. One of my favorite styles of gaming, to be honest. Did I mention I like freedom? And Hollow Knight is the best Metroidvania game I've ever played. And that's a big deal. So yeah, you can go and do whatever you want in this game. If you've already played through the game, you might argue that the opening is still somewhat limited, and I'd agree with you to an extent. Yes, you can go left and right from the start, but in order to progress, you have to fight through this boss, the False Knight. So you can gain the, your Blast ability, the uh, Vengeful Spirit. We'll just call that your Blast ability. This Blast ability will allow you to get past this mole-like creature so you can go on to the next area of the game. Though, did you notice that this wall cracks after the False Knight does his first ground pound pound tantrum attack in my first playthrough, not at all. But during my second go, I noticed it right away. I thought to myself, hmm, wouldn't it be funny if I could just hit that wall and leave this fight? I went for it, and guess what? If for some reason, you don't have time to fight this dude, well, that's fine. Just wait for him to do this tantrum, and off you go. You see, that's the beauty of Hollow Knight. The first area of the game is contained just enough for new players to get a proper feel for how the game works. But if this is your second go, well, you don't have to feel like you're slowly reworking yourself through the game. So if it is your first time, you go through some light platforming challenges, and the enemy enemies you fight are quite manageable. You get that feeling of freedom, you know, a sense of being able to go wherever you want. Yet, yeah, you're closed off enough not to step into a ridiculously difficult area, making you think that the game is too tough, and therefore, not for you. You even get a chance to increase your fighting skills by doing these two mock boss battles. The door gets locked in this area, forcing you to fight. No running for you. You kill that one enemy, and another two will pop up, just slightly increasing the challenge as to not overwhelm you. And, check this out. If you jump up here, and you're like, oh, Oh, I want to hit this thing for monies. Boom, a secret path opens up. Instead of fighting these guys right away, you can go up here where you'll find a nice hot spring to keep your soul meter full. That way, if you're not so good at the game, you'll have plenty of chances to heal. There's even a bench here because, you know, when you die, you're going to get sent back to a bench. Did I forget to say that? Yes, if you die, you will respawn back to the last bench you rested on. So let's talk about dying in this game for a second. This happens. You'll also lose your money. Your geo? Uh, geo? Uh, money. So the game is nudging you to be careful and to not jump at enemies like a blind fool. Don't worry though, this shadow version of you is hanging out where you last died, so just give him a smack or two and you'll get your money back. However, you still need to be careful because if you die before you can defeat your shadow self, well then bye bye money. Again, the game is telling you to pay attention. I know this all sounds mean and rough that you could possibly lose what you've earned, and yes, but really, you should be paying attention. Also, there is another solution, but we'll talk about that in another video. So don't forget to subscribe 
subscribe so you can watch that video when it comes out. Ooh. Funny note, I had no idea about the secret path. I'm a dumb dumb and missed it, so I just had to get good, you know? Then you'll do some slightly tougher platforming challenges, and then you'll see this sign. If you're a good, obedient bug, you'll follow the sign, but I'm a strong, independent man, so I head down. To the left. Nope, I want to go to the right. Uh, where am I? So, the map system. Before you fight those other ugly little bugs, you'll have heard some singing and random papers lying around. And this guy, Cornifer, he's a, a cartographer. You know, a map maker. This game doesn't just hand you over a map. Nah, you gotta earn the money to pay for it. Don't worry, it's not expensive. He's polite and tells you that his wife is selling map supplies back up in town. For me, in my first playthrough, I was just like, nah, I ain't gonna go any further without a map. I need to know what I'm doing. Awesome thing is, in my second playthrough, I felt like I knew the game well enough to not even bother, making the game a bit more challenging and fun the second time through. Cornifer's wife will sell you a ton of map supplies too, making the exploration as difficult or as easy as you want. I personally chose the easy way because I like maps and I like filling maps up with stuff. Also, I was new to the game. You can buy a quill that will allow you to fill in the spots that Cornifer seems to not make, probably because he's not good at his job or something, but we're thankful for the map anyway. You can also get a compass because who doesn't own a GPS in this day and age? Your grandma. The compass is also known as a charm, where you can only put it on while resting on a bench. More on that later, as in a future video. So you go back to that point where you, <coughs> or me, felt so lost and we can fight another mini boss. It's a larger version of these basic creatures, teaching new players to pay attention to fast moving attacks. It's also pretty sad because once you defeat it, you find out it had a bunch of babies it was trying to take care of. These little guys are the babies and you just killed the mother. Or maybe it's the father. I'm kind of unsure about that sort of thing in the bug world. Nonetheless, that's pretty damn sad. So you explore and explore. You'll probably be able to guess that this area isn't so good, so you, <coughs> I, avoid it at all costs and see where else I can go. You find a character named Sly who's in some odd trance with orange eyes. You wake him up and you have yet another friend in your little town. You'll come across several other paths that are blocked off and a dark, scary room. Nope, there's a room with a trolley. Uh, then there's a room with a mole blocking your way and you can't seem to fight it properly. You You'll come across enemies with shields, teaching you that you'll soon have to be strategic with your fighting approach. You can also fight this guy who's guarding this little grub. Since the grub seems to be, like, important because he's in a jar and stuff, you might even choose to fight him. If you got the skills at avoiding his pound attack and shockwave blast, you'll be able to free this little grub buddy. Back at the other part of the map, near the top left, you'll find this old crying grub. <sighs> If you ended up freeing the other little grub buddy, then hey, a nice little reward. You've now been given a quest to find all the grubs without the game saying a single word to you. Ooh, it's like a show and tell sort of deal. Don't tell me, just show me. You'll possibly come across this singing bug, Mila. She's so sweet and doesn't even attack you. More friends! You should even make her your best friend. She even asks you to sing along with her. Like, I'm thinking lifelong friends at this point. Then you might find the Temple of the Black Egg, and you'll meet a cool sounding fellow named Coral. He tells you that he loves to explore, and something about the dead world being sprung to life? So, these bugs that we've been fighting were already dead and now they're back at it? And so, both you and Quirrell wonder, what's going on down here? I never know, man. If you chose to talk to the elder bug back in town of Dirtmouth, he'll tell you that this whole place was a fallen kingdom and now everything is dead. Yet, for some reason, folks are still drawn back into it. Hmm. So you are a knight in a dead kingdom, but everybody has been zombified and yeah. At least here are some non-dead folks, like your good friend friend Mila. She's so sweet, isn't she? There's another place you can check out based on this sign. You pay some money and this dude called The Last Stag is like, what's up yo? I can take you around the world if there's a stag station, that is. So you're like, hell yeah. Good old fast travel. I think this is pretty cool because most games have a fast travel system, but they typically don't make any sense in the context of the world. If you've seen my Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze video, you'll know I much prefer and appreciate context in games, or anything really. So there's context. A stag station has been built in a kingdom and you'll get to to travel very, very fast indeed. Sweet, so then you can just go to this spot finally where the area boss is. Or you don't have to do any of the exploring that I just showed off to you. Instead, you can just take this path and boom, you're at the boss fight. Remember, you have the freedom to do whatever you want. 
Honestly! Just before the boss fight, you can fight another one of these buddies. Maybe the game is trying to give you a little hint of something. Hmm. Enter the false knight. Check out the way he fights. It's like, if you were paying attention to the enemies prior to this fight, you would already know exactly how to fight him. You, being the attentive gamer that you are, you beat him down a bit. Then, if you remember from before, this left wall cracks and you get to choose again. Fight him, don't fight him, do whatever you want. Baby, you can go Though, if you do fight him, he'll die in this sad, unceremonious way. He's a maggot creature who obviously doesn't fit the armor. Makes sense why he's called the False Knight. Cool, so you made a choice in the matter and you're gonna talk to this slug. She gives you a new blast ability and then forces you to kill this mole-like guy. But then guess what? You're now good enough to kill this other mole-like guy who was blocking this path. Remember? From before? Gee, pay attention. Green path, to be exact. So this place is full of a new variety of enemies and now there's not really any spikes. Instead, it's hot boiling poison poison water, um, liquid, that will kill you. So maybe you decide to rest on a bench early on in the level. You check the map, and though it shows nothing for this area, you take a look at the Forgotten Crossroads, and wow, that's, well, that's actually quite a bit. Seems like this world is getting pretty big for sure. And here's the map after you've explored the entire world. Just kidding. I know you don't want to be spoiled. So are you catching my drifts on why I feel this game is so great yet? No? Then just buy the game and find out for yourself. I'd love to talk more about why I love this game, but just like my mean nasty brother, I feel like I'd be wasting time. So instead, go buy the game because it's a steal of a deal. Like 18 bucks is kinda great and you're gonna have an awesome time. You can get this game on the Nintendo Switch or the PC. Either way, just get it and play it. Then after the last free DLC comes out, which will probably have more story and lore, I'll make a nice long video concluding my feelings for Hollow Knight. This way you can actually truly understand my love for this game. So yeah, please subscribe so you can catch my next Hollow Knight video once it comes out. I'll talk spoilers and why I actually think this game is a 10 out of 10 masterpiece. Ah, sweet. See you next time. I hope you enjoy the game and peace. Thank you.